By 2025, Argentine-based operator Bukebus hopes to get the largest battery electric passenger ferry from Tasmanian high-speed catamaran ferry manufacturer Incat. Now that's an exciting one. We need to know more about this. Do you think it's exciting? Well, let's watch the whole video to learn more about this. Welcome back to Electrify. In today's video, we are going to see the amazing electric ferry that can cross oceans. So without no further delay, let's get right into the video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Ferry services are provided by the Argentine business Bukebus between Buenos Aires, Uruguay, and Colonia. In addition, the firm runs a fleet of buses from Montevideo, Colonia, and Piriapolis to Termas del Arape, Termas del Damon, Salto, Uruguay, Carmelo, Atlantida, La Paloma, La Pedrera, and Punta del Diablo. Incat constructed a new boat in 2013 with the name Francisco after Pope Francis. It will be one of the fastest ferries in the world, operating on the Buenos Aires Uruguay route. Its top speed was 107 kilometers an hour. Its capacity was to hold 150 automobiles and 1,024 people in addition to its personnel. Incat Tasmania is an Australian high-speed craft, or HSC, Triton ferry maker. Its largest sea-going passenger and automobile ferries have been a commercial success, but it has also constructed military transport and, as of 2015, smaller river and bay ferries. It was started by Bob Clifford and is headquartered in Derwent Park, a neighborhood of Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. Incant Tasmania relocated to its current location in Prince of Wales Bay in 1989, enabling it to build larger ships. Incant then produced its first 74-meter fast catamaran ferry in 1990. A number of other companies were also building large vehicle-carrying ferries out of aluminium at the same time. Incat supplanted numerous monohull ferries and the majority of planning hull and hovercraft series during the course of the following 10 years. Due to the popularity of this novel ferry, other shipyards all over the world began using their facilities to construct big aluminium catamarans for transportation of heavy vehicles. Bukebus, a ferry operator in South America, has placed an order for the largest aluminium ferry in the world, which will use liquefied natural gas, or LNG, and diesel fuel for power. The 130-meter planning ferry that will travel between Uruguay and Argentina will be constructed by Incat Tasmania. The finished ship will be the biggest aluminium ferry ever constructed and the ninth for the Incat clients. This longest ferry would operate alongside other ships built by Incat that serve the ports along river plate connecting Uruguay and Argentina. Although switching to electric propulsion necessitates a considerable overhaul, Clifford claims the business would swap out 400 tons of cells for 500 tons of equipment and gasoline tanks to keep its low weight. Clifford adds that constructing the ship out of aluminium rather than steel might reduce its weight by half, and that adding electrified ferries would not increase the cost of the ship in comparison to conventional ships. The first plan called for a vessel with two aluminium hulls joined by a bridge section, a 2,100 passenger capacity including crew, and space for 226 automobiles. Its peak speed was predicted to be roughly 37.5 knots, and its four dual-fuel engines would burn LNG. Bukebus has since requested that Incat investigate the possibility of using batteries and electric vehicles in place of the LNG power plant. However, a lot of ferry operators preferred conventional catamaran designs, and the small market for fast Incats grew congested with suppliers who were willing to undercut one another in order to maintain the viability of their shipyards. Two manufacturers of big catamaran ferries, Incat and its Perth-based rival, Austal, survived the industry's ultimate demise. Although Incat had to shrink, the firm continued to build ferries and create larger, more effective designs after spending a brief time in receivership. Incat Tasmania's employment increased quickly in 2016 due to its diversification into smaller bay ferries in 2015, as well as a rebound in the market for ferries that can transport heavy vehicles. Each year, the shipping industry generates a sizable quantity of carbon dioxide, roughly 3% globally. That is, in Europe, maritime traffic adds about 12%. The World Maritime Organization wants to cut average fleet emissions by 40% by 2030, while reducing CO2 emissions for the new naval units constructed starting in 2025 by 30%. The changeover can be significantly aided by electric ferries and ships. Since they often travel the same route, zero-emission ships are a great area to start electrifying since it's simple to install charging infrastructure. Incat Tasmania chairman Robert Clifford previously spoke with passenger ship technology about the use of LNG in fast ferries. Quote, LNG is here to stay. While it might not be the end of the story, it will be here for a long time, even if the weight of the requisite gas tanks would be an issue for fast ferries. 
We could also live with tanks. We foresee greater progress as tank technology progresses and makes them lighter than they had already been previously." End quote. The hull of 096 vessel is listed as under construction on INCAD's website, while Riviera Maritime Media says that the vessel has been a planned peak speed of 25 knots. However, little information has been made public at this point in the development process. And with that, we come to the middle of this video. We saw the origin of the ferry and now we know a little more. Continue watching the video, but before getting into the rest of the video, subscribe to our channel. Until shore-based charging options are available, the new ferry will also include multi-fuel generators as a stopgap measure. After that, the fuel container and generator components will be removed, and this ship will run on electricity alone. Retractable charging cables, which are anticipated to be handled both overnight top-ups and 30-40 to 40 minute rapid charging, will be positioned port. According to reports, INCAT suppliers are working to develop battery tanks and motors, and if all goes according to plan, Bouquet Boost may foresee receiving the world's largest zero-carbon emissions lightweight ferry sometime in 2025. Electric ferries will not only protect the environment, but they'll also save their operators money. The first ferry in Norway to be entirely electric claimed to have reduced expenses by 80%. Moreover, Ellen, the allegedly biggest electric boat in the world, which runs in southern Denmark, contributes to a yearly reduction of 2,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Argentina and Uruguay are connected by an all-year-round boat service that runs between Buenos Aires and Montevideo. Depending on the boat company, the trip from Buenos Aires to Montevideo takes between 2 and 4 hours and 45 minutes. Given its short duration, it serves as crucial transportation link for travelers through South America. The cost of the trip depends on the operator, the season, and if you're driving a ferry. The peak season frequently sees increased prices. In general, outside of the peak season, off-peak travel is when you may get the lowest ferry tickets. With contracts confirmed for the following four years, Incat Shipyard is now quite optimistic about receiving more orders for large vessels. To allow the building of the new boats in Incat's extremely strong order book, the workforce, which currently numbers over 600, will be increased. The passenger area will have tourists, business, and first-class seating, as well as the largest duty-free retail area ever built on a fast ferry, a more than 1,000 square meter space that has been completely decked out. The vessel will be the first high-speed boat designed under the HSC code to be driven by gas turbines utilizing LNG as the main resource and naval distillate for standby and auxiliary usage. It will also see the standard implementation of LNG-driven dual-fuel engines inside an INCAT high-speed ferry. Its peak speed was predicted to be approximately 37.5 knots, and its four twin fuel engines would burn LNG. But now Bouquet Boost has requested that INCAT investigate substituting the LNG power plant with cells and electric motors. There aren't many specifics available at this time, but the INCAT website shows that the whole 096 vessel is still under construction and that its highest target speed is 25 knots. Multi-fuel generators will still be installed on the new ferry as a temporary solution until offshore-based charging is possible. Once solutions are in place, it will be managed to install a port and starboard, which are expected to support 30 minutes fast charging as well as an overnight battery topper. And with that, we've come to a close. We saw some amazing features of the ferry via INCAT. What are your opinions on this ferry? Do you think that they can take this many people and cross oceans? Share your thoughts down in the space given below. If you enjoyed our video, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such content, and also ring the bell icon for notifications. Watch some other videos from our playlist too, and we'll see you in the next video.